Hello everyone, welcome once again to Relay Tutorials that is relevant, easy learning, accessible to you. I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. Today we'll speak about something which has got a very practical application, operative vaginal delivery or instrumental delivery. There are two parts, uh, one will be about forceps and part two would be about vacuum or ventus delivery. Assisted vaginal birth by vacuum or forceps is used to assist birth for maternal and fetal indications as well. In UK, between 10% and 15% of all women give birth by assisted vaginal birth. Almost one in every three Nali Paris women give birth through vacuum or forceps. Who really are the candidates or what are the indications? Fetal suspected or fetal compromise, which would be evident either on a cardiotocography, that is CTG reading, I hope you all know about that, or abnormal fetal scalp blood sampling, or if you have a thick meconium, well evident and you know you can see it on naked eye examination. Maternal nulli paris women, sometimes those who are pregnant for the first time or primary gravita, in those patients if we see a lack of continuing progress for 3 hours, total of active and passive second stage labor with regional analgesia or 2 hours without regional analgesia, then this is slow progress. In Paris women, lack of continuing progress for 2 hours, total of active and passive second stage labor with regional analgesia or 1 hour without regional analgesia. Here we need to assist them now. Sometimes females are too completely exhausted, they are so tired and in distress, then you have to cut down the second stage. Same happens, certain medical indications where you want them to avoid valsalva manumer, you don't want them to push really hard like heart disease or something. In those conditions also we need to cut down the second stage of labor and an instrument can be applied. Combined fetal and maternal indications for assisted vaginal birth often coexist. What are the basic criteria which needs to be fulfilled? The cervix must be fully dilated and effaced. Now here we are talking about forceps delivery. Things might differ a little bit when we'll speak about ventus. Membranes must be ruptured, obviously, right? Head must be fully engaged and not more than one-fifth palpable abdominally. The bladder must be emptied. You must evacuate the bladder with the use of some catheter or a K90. Check the presence of good uterine contractions. Whenever you're applying any instrument, you have to make sure that there are good uterine contraction, only then the force applied down there in the vagina would help or would assist that baby to deliver. So there is certain preparation which needs to be done before application of any instrument. Uh, here they have mentioned about mid cavity. All these uh, guidelines are standard as I always uh, tell you that I either use ACOG guidelines or the RCOG guidelines. So appropriate analgesia is in place for mid cavity rotational deliveries. They are not being performed very frequently these days. A pudental block may be appropriate particularly in the context of urgent delivery. Fully aseptic precautions should be taken. The operator who is actually doing it must have the knowledge, experience and skill necessary for it. Adequate facilities should be available. There should be appropriate equipment, proper bed, proper lighting, your support staff, backup plan in place in case of failure to deliver. So especially when conducting mid-cavity deliveries, theater staff should be immediately available to allow an emergency cesarean section to be performed without delay. That is less than 30 minutes. You cannot delay beyond that. A senior obstetrician competent in performing mid-cavity deliveries should be present if a junior trainee is performing the delivery. You should know the complications that may arise. You should have that anticipation. Something like shoulder dystocia because, you know, generally 
uh, some sort of a cephalopelvic disproportion, you know, mild CPD or a large size baby. Those are the ones where you have the difficulty in delivering them. So you can expect some so shoulder dystocia. Patient has been into labor for quite some time and then the big size baby is coming out or we are using even instrumentation. So you can expect a postpartum hemorrhage event to occur. So you must be prepared for that. Your PPH trolley and tray should be ready. I hope you know about shoulder dystocia drill and PPH drill. We are going to take them up in our subsequent videos. Personnel present that are trained in neonatal resuscitation. Of course, the baby that comes out needs immediate attention by a proper pediatric staff or rather a, an ICU staff along with a neonatologist. When do we label it as failed forceps? Operative vaginal births that have a higher risk of failure should be considered a trial and conducted in a place where immediate recourse to cesarean section can be undertaken. Higher rates of failure are associated with certain factors like maternal body mass index over 30, estimated fetal weight over 4 kgs or clinically big baby, Instead of occipital anterior, we have occipital posterior position. Mid cavity delivery, or when one fifth of the head palpable per abdomen. Operative vaginal delivery should be abundant when there is no evidence of progressive descent with moderate traction during each contraction. As I mentioned, you have to put this force of traction only while. A contraction is happening or where delivery is not imminent following three contractions of a correctly applied instrument by an experienced operator then you have to just abandon it Simpson's outlet forceps I'm specifically uh, describing this one because uh, this is the one which is most frequently used it has got a four major components, blades. The blades grasp the fetal head and each one is curved to fit around the head. They can be oval or elliptical and can be fenestrated with a hole in the middle. They can be solid also, but uh, usually fenestrated ones are used. Many blades are also curved in a plane 90 degree from the cephalic curve to fit the maternal pelvis, that is pelvic curve. There is a little video where I'll actually demonstrate this uh, instrument live and it will be towards the end of the video i hope you will in, uh, you will understand the instrument better when i'll describe you in person shanks the shanks connect the blades to the handles and provide the length of the device they are either parallel or crossing then there is a lock in between it is the articulation between the shanks many different types have been designed then finally, the handles which you grasp. The handles allow the operator to hold the device and apply traction to the fetal head in the right direction. Then there is an ACOG classification of types of forceps delivery. Outlet forceps, the scalp is visible at the introitus without separating the labia. It is just at the perineum. The fetal skull has reached the pelvic floor. The sagittal suture is an anteroposterior diameter, right or left occipital anterior or posterior position. That is the fetal head is at or on the perineum and rotation does not exceed 45 degree. Low forceps, the leading point of the fetal skull is at a station greater than or equal to plus 2 cm. So it's not exactly at the perineum but it has gone really down and it's not on the pelvic floor. So it is at plus 2. When we call it plus 3, then it is almost like pelvic floor. Low forceps deliveries without rotation are performed with a rotation of less than 45 degree. The procedure is described as beginning with rotation if the rotation is more than 45 degree. Mid forceps, this is a difficult one. The station is above plus 2 cm, but the head is engaged. Attempted vaginal deliveries from this station are rarely attempted these days and are, they are associated with an increased rate of morbidity compared with LSCS in the second stage of labor. 
high forceps this is not included in the classification these deliveries are no longer recommended at all what care you should take after delivery regular paracetamol and diclofenac should be offered after an operative vaginal delivery in the absence of contraindications because here you know a uh, patient has already been exhausted then you have applied an instrument obviously sometimes it can lead to some minor lacerations sometime extension of episiotomy you, you need to really check her perineum well and rule out any sort of injuries the timing and volume of the first void urine should be monitored and documented a post void residual should be measured if retention is suspected women who have had a spinal anesthetic or an epidural that has been topped up for a trial may be at increased risk of retention and should be recommended to have an indwelling catheter in place for at least 12 hours post delivery to prevent asymptomatic bladder overfilling women should be offered physiotherapy directed strategies to prevent urinary incontinence women should be reassessed for any perineal trauma and for risk factors for venous thromboembolism and if appropriate thromboprophylaxis should be prescribed so that's all by forceps delivery now it i'll show you a little video how exactly you apply them and what are the various parts and in what direction the force needs to be applied it's soon following so i have with me today outlet forceps also called as wrigley's forceps let us learn about its parts as you can see first of all how to place it so while placing it on your labor trolley or on your table you may see that it should face like this if you're placing it like this this is wrong if there is a gap over here and it's not lying comfortably then this is wrong this is important because that is how you decide the size which one is the left and which one is the right so as i pick up these are the blades these are the fenestrated blades of forceps with a pelvic curve and a cephalic curve these are the shanks and this is a nice lock holding the forceps in between and these are the handles which you hold while applying the force now how do we really apply it see when i place it and i disintegrate it this becomes the right side and this becomes the left So I always begin with the left side application. Before applying the forceps, you must ensure a few prerequisites once again. The bladder of the mother should be empty. Should should be having good uterine contractions. She should have an adequate analgesia. Give her a nice pudendal block or something. Make sure that the cervix is fully dilated, fully effaced, and then check fetal position. The baby's vaginal suture should be in AP diameter of maternal pelvis and or the outlet of the maternal pelvis. Okay, so that is how you hold it, somewhat like uh, in a pen holding fashion. Apply it little vertically, go little vertical. You need to take support of your right hand fingers when you are applying the left side. So this is the left side. So now let us learn how to apply the right traction. You need to put a little. Uh, cotton pad over here put your finger over this and hold it nicely imagine this as a fetal head okay ask your assistant to give a nice perineal support otherwise forceps can lead to third degree fourth degree perineal tears and you do not want that so while applying the traction make sure the uh, mother is having a nice contraction you have to go horizontal or parallel to the ground the first force should be parallel to the ground and then you need to gently extend it and go vertical okay have a look go like this and then take the scalp upwards so that is how a forceps is being applied while your assistant is giving a nice perineal support so this is a little practical demonstration but i will repeat myself that never do it in case you are very young or you just joined your labor room post and you need to undergo a nice training for the same try to observe your seniors how they do it learn about it and then go for it 
And always remember, if you attempt thrice, if you are not able to pull the baby out in three attempts, it is called as failed forceps and you must abandon the procedure right away. Hope you liked it. And in the next video, we'll learn how to apply our ventus or how to do a vacuum delivery. Take care.